small businesses and farms, for example, how does the insurance work and who gets what? Yeah, very interesting. We have a huge number of small businesses in New Zealand. In fact, we have more registered small companies um, per head of population than anywhere else in the Western world. And the rural sector is no exception to that. Uh, it, it's evolved over a period of time. Once upon a time, it was a farm. It was done as a partnership, and 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 you know the the farmer milk cows. And but now we have so many support uh, farm workers. So your dairy farmer now has a, a milking contractor, possibly, or a shear milker, a lower order, or a, or a fifty fifty shear milker. Then they have agricultural contractors that come in and they 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 bale the hay and they mend the fences. So the whole sector is made up of small businesses, one or two man bands, um, and they work a little bit differently in how they get their money. So we often talk about income protection. How do we how do we replace our income if we're unable to work? Uh, and we have ACC, which generally for most employed people works yeah, well. But you're getting eighty percent of no no drawings because. Correct. You're not taking any drawings necessarily. Yeah, absolutely, that's right, and that's where that's where ACC doesn't work, and we need to have something that focuses on on the business. So what we need to do is we need to look at the business as a separate financial entity, and and what would cause a financial suffering to the business if something was to occur. We we, we insure our tractors and our, our our all our equipment so that if that doesn't work, if that has an accident, doesn't work, it's we we can get it fixed. However. That tractor doesn't work without somebody actually sitting behind the steering wheel and driving it. So let me show you. I'm going to draw a picture. Please which, do. That's why we've got this. That's why we've got this here. I'll show you how, in in very very simple terms, and and it's it's nice and simple terms because I understand it. And this is how I get it. So hope, hopefully, uh, other people I'll get, get it. it as well. So first of all, I'm going to draw what is essentially a bucket. I call it the money bucket. Uh, this is essentially your business bank account. Money comes into that bucket because you perform a function. So let's say, Rob, for example, you're a contract milker. Really, really simple. So money comes into that bucket because you milk cows. Yep. Yeah, that's the, that's the fundamental. Or make silage or whatever it might be. Doesn't matter, let's fundamentally just talk about milking cows because that's easy. That's a primarily where most of your money is gonna come in and it sits in the bottom of this money bucket, your business bank account, yeah? And that happens because of you, yep. So money comes out of that bucket, yeah? And that's first of all your drawings. That's that's what you live on. That pays the groceries, gets you an ale on a Friday night. And um, that's 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 your money. Also comes out of that could be wages. You may employ some staff, and a whole bunch of other expenses: petrol for your for your for your farm bike, all the other stuff that comes into. It, and it pays all. And your insurances. Insurances and your ACC levies, all that sort of stuff. So, money coming in here, good. Money coming in here, good. Everything's fine until. Something happens to you by way of your health. It could be accident or illness, doesn't matter. All of a sudden, you're out of the picture. If you're out of the picture, ultimately, this will stop because you drive that. You may have a couple of people working for you and they can continue to work, but you are responsible and you are key to this function occurring. This function can't occur, this stops. This comes down here, that stops. That stops, that stops, that stops, that stops. So what we need is we need this to continue. How do we do that? We need another Rob. There is only one of me, <laughs> but I know what you mean. We need someone else to perform <coughs> this particular function. It doesn't have to be one person. It could be a consultant that comes in from time to time. It could be one of the employees who's asked to step up and take that responsibility, but that's going to be a cost. That has to come out of here because the other Rob isn't going to do it for free. No. So that comes out of this bucket. It's money that you haven't accounted for, money that's extra, that's not in your budget, it's not in your business plan. So we need some money coming into here. Yeah? That is what we call insurance. Insurance is simply the funding mechanism to be able to provide for this so that this can continue and therefore these things here can all continue. So that money doesn't come to me as Rob, no. it goes to the business as in yeah. Rob's country. Would it might be. Where is it needed? It's needed in the business. So where should it go? Into the business, not to Rob. If this goes to Rob, it's income. It's directed to Rob. Yeah. If he needs to boost this bucket up, he has to put the money in. But when it comes into him, it's income. It's taxed. It's income tax because it's classed as income. 
if it comes in here, it's taxed, but only at the P&L level. And theoretically, the money comes in here should be the same as that goes out here. So it doesn't affect the profit. It doesn't affect the loss. There's no loss. There's no profit. It balances out. Does that make sense? So it this, does. it's just really figuring out the amount that needs to go in there. So who should own that policy? Well, to me, it would be me, but I bet I'm wrong. No, it's the business. <laughs> yes. Because the business is a financial entity in its own right. It can own its own policies and should. And there are tax advantages. Now, I'm not, a t I'm not an accountant, uh, and you need to, uh, you know, business people need to talk to their accountant. But there are definitive and clear tax advantages in, in, in having that owned by the business. And there are, of course, uh, practicalities around that money going into the business. If you were taken out of the picture, you had a bad accident, you were in, in, in intensive care, uh, you're in a coma, and that money comes to you. There might be issues about the, that money when that money is available. Coming in here, it's in the business. So the even business a broken bank. leg can, can put me up on the couch? That's right. Absolutely that's right. And now we need to talk to people on, an, on a case-by-case -case basis to see what's appropriate. But the other aspect of this is because it's going in here, it's not offset by any ACC entitlement. Because ACC is paid to you and is taxed before you get it. And we've talked about that before. Okay, so the insurance up above here, that's actually paid for by my company. Correct, by your business. By my yep. business. Yep. Now you own the business, so indirectly it is you that's paying it because at the end of the day it's your business or it might be yours and a business partner. It might be uh, your wife or your spouse or whoever it might be. However, this is your business, the money needs to go in here because the money needs to come out of there in order to replace you as and, key to the business. And some insured? I mean, how, how do we work out the sum insured? Well, that varies. That varies from operation to operation, from, from, from um, business to business, depending on what the business is. We're a country where we have so many small businesses, they are often tradespeople who happen to be in business. Yep. Because that's the way they get their remuneration. That's how they make their money. That's how they pay their bills. Yeah, so it will vary from, from, from operation to operation. A bigger operation, it might require much greater expertise to be, able to, to be able to perform that function. So it really is one that's, that's individual, and that's where we come in. And we look at, look at the business, and we discuss with the business owner or owners, as the case may be, and say, OK, well, what, what's likely to happen if this scenario occurs? How, what's the financial impact? What's going to cost you to create another role? And it might not be one particular um, person. It doesn't have to be one entity. It could be a number of entities. It could be a consultant that comes in every week to talk to the staff about what they need to do for that particular time. Hank, thank you very much indeed.